we've got to make some fast decisions about what to do with both mom and baby. And we want to make sure that we have that patient in the right setting to get the proper care. Looking for consistency, confidence, and clarity about a diagnosis, at least in my experience, has been uh, what I feel is the most important thing that I can bring to that patient. When you have painful contractions in the midst of your pregnancy, you know that that's not normal and you are immediately concerned. Typically, a patient will come in to either the outpatient setting with symptomatic contractions or more frequently into a triage setting. So when a woman comes in in threat and preterm labor, um, is, is to get the management right. Because if you overmanage, you can cause harm. Um, but if you get it right, you can really improve outcomes. If a patient is, in fact, going into premature labor, then we don't want to send them home. We want to um, engage our neonatal colleagues. We want to delay delivery as, as much as possible. The typical response would be to put them on a monitor and evaluate the contractions, as well as do an internal exam uh, to evaluate their cervical dilation and effacement. For the patient who presents with symptoms of preterm labor, it truly is critically important for us to identify, is that a clinical presentation that's going to lead to a preterm birth? The rapid FFN test is a lifesaver for us because we need to know what patients are truly at risk for delivery so that we can get those patients to our level three facilities in a timely fashion. The fetal fibronectin test is a very unique tool that allows us to triage women that have any type of a symptom that may be consistent with preterm labor. An FFN test can really just help everyone to know what our you know, management strategy should be in a lot faster and a more efficient uh, manner. Your FFN testing is a great way of being able to get that patient in and out of triage within an hour. What the fibronectin does is allows us to look for biochemical changes that may occur before the cervix starts to uh, dilate any face, at least from a digital perspective. The test provides us a result that's either positive or negative. It's a yes or a no result. Negative FFN testing is really helpful to our patients, one, because they don't unnecessarily have to stay in the hospital. It has uh, FDA approval, it has decades of research behind it, but when the test is negative, they should feel extremely confident about their prognosis and ability to go home safely, resume normal life. The negative value is amazing and gives us a 99% reassurance that they will not deliver within the next two weeks. If the fetal fibronectin test is positive, it's automatically taken a very low risk individual and elevated their risk to a risk threshold that really should prompt us based on protocols and standards to move that patient to a higher level of care. There's a specific special time frame in which antenatal corticosteroids are demonstrably beneficial to the preterm infant. And that really is within a seven day window. You give her antenatal steroids, which we know are very good if you deliver soon, but if you don't deliver soon, which happens in most women, they can cause harm. So always remember to get your FFN first. That's gonna really give you that objective data that you're gonna to need to determine what you're gonna do next with this patient. This particular test should be used in each and every instance when a patient presents with symptoms of preterm labor to provide us objective evidence and really act as a standard of care as to what to do next and direct our next steps for that pregnant person. So I often say, why, why wouldn't you use fetal fibronectin? We've done the research, we know it saves money, we know it improves outcomes and our ability to accurately triage and it helps the anxiety of the woman tremendously.